I've been really into making these abstract setups lately, and I wanted to go over how to make the setup for the animation that you just saw. Kind of looks like this weird abstract fluid motion, which I thought was pretty cool. I'm also going to be trying something a little bit different with this video. Since the goal is for you to learn, I'm going to list the six essential steps that I took to create this setup. And once I've listed them, I recommend that you pause the video and try to create something similar on your own. And you're always going to learn more through trying things out and seeing what works and what doesn't work. So once you've completed your setup, go ahead, come back, and we'll see how it compares to what I did. So starting off here, the first thing that we need to do is create the starting shape. From there, we're going to add some base distortion to that shape. And then we're going to create a VDB and add some distortion to that VDB. And then we're going to add some final distortion to break up the shape a little bit and just kind of overall change it. And we're going to add the final small details, the small shapes. Let's go ahead and jump into Houdini. And I'm going to hover over our viewport here, press D, come to this background. I'm just going to set this to dark just so we can see a little bit better with the volumes that we're going to be working with. Let's go ahead and drop in our geometry nub and create our base shape, which is just going to be a sphere. And I'm going to go ahead, put our wire shading on here. I'm going to create the polygon type and I'm going to up the frequency by quite a bit. So something like 50 to just give us some more resolution. And then we're going to create some randomness in this shape. So we'll use a mountain node and it doesn't really matter what you do here. It's just creating some more randomness to this because what we're going to end up ultimately creating, we're going to be distorting a lot. So you're not really going to see these initial shapes all that much, but I'm going to go ahead and use the Whirly cellular F2 F1. And I'm just going to find a shape that I kind of like, which this should work. And from here, we're going to create a volume in it. So we'll do VDB and, or, uh, from polygons. And we don't want to work with a surface VDB. We want to use a volume. So we're going to do the fog. And this is pretty blurry just to start off here. That's because this voxel size is pretty high. So we'll set this something lower like 0 0.005. And that should bring our general shapes back. And then we want to distort this as well. So we'll use a volume VOP. And we're going to go ahead and dive on in here. And we're going to use some noise to do this. So you can use whatever noise you want, but I'm just going to use a turbulent noise. And we're going to wire the position into the position and the noise into the density. And then we're going to just promote some of these parameters. So we'll do the type, frequency, offset, amplitude, and roughness, and maybe even this turbulence as well. Just doing that by middle clicking on those inputs. I'm also going to change this to a 3D noise. And then there is some stuff going on here, but it's kind of hard to see what it's going to ultimately look like until we convert it back to polygons. So I'm going to go ahead and convert it back. So we'll do a VDB convert. And like I said, we're going to convert this back to polygons. It's going to disappear on us right away. Once I start dragging this ISO value up, you're going to see it starts bringing it back, but it's eating into our shape, which we don't want. So we'll set this to something super low, like 0 0.001, and that should be pretty solid here. So let's go ahead and start playing with this noise here. We will try, I don't know, sparse convolution, I guess, kind of like that sometimes. Maybe turn the roughness up a little bit. Play with this turbulence, kind of like it at five here. And then let's just crank up the offset to give us something random. And we'll play with this more here in a moment, but let's go ahead and change the frequency up a bit too. Uh, change that to something like three, maybe we'll do six on the Y there. And let's play around with some of these settings just to give us something that we might like. Kind of liking what we're getting here. Maybe crank this up a little bit as well. Nah, maybe not. Let's change the frequency here. Getting something. Play with the amplitude. Nah, it's not giving us anything. 
Let's go ahead, let's change this setting. Just give us a little bit more of this eating into our object here. Kind of like this, we'll see how this works out. And let's go ahead and smooth this out. We'll see if the smooth will work on this. That worked pretty well, that should be fine. Sometimes you have to convert it back to a VDB and smooth it out that way. Sometimes you don't have to, or a combination of the both. Just try some different things. From here, we're going to go ahead and twist this to give us some interesting shapes. So let's set our capture region. We're going to go to the bottom here, go to the top. And like I said, we're gonna twist this, do a full 180 twist. That should give us something kind of interesting. And then we're also going to do this a second time. And we're gonna change the capture region this time. And we're gonna go across this way. And that should give us this kind of twisting type motion that we see here which I kinda like. And then I'm also going to add some small details to this. So we'll do a mountain node here. And then we're going to drop the element size down quite a bit. We're also going to drop the amplitude down quite a bit as well. Cause like I said, we just want some small noise added to our shapes here. I'm gonna go ahead and make this smooth shaded so I can see kind of what's going on a little bit better. I'm gonna change this to sparse convolution as well. And we're gonna drop this down further still. Give us something super small. Drop the amplitude down a little bit. Just to give us a little bit more breakup in our shape here. And then I'm going to clean up some of these issues and see we got some normals, kind of weird stuff going on. Let's go ahead and create a volume from this again. So we'll do VDB from polygons, set this back to a fog VDB and set this down to something even lower, maybe like 0 0.002, just to make sure that we get all of our shape in here. And then we're gonna convert this back to polygons. And again, we got to set our ISO value very, very low. And this gives us something a little bit okay, but it looks like we may need to smooth this out a little bit. So let's go ahead and just do a VDB smooth. Wire this up into here. Set this to like Gaussian. Let's play with this a little bit. See what it gives us. Not liking what it's doing. So we'll just delete that. We'll drop another smooth node down. Should take a second to cook, yep. And this looks pretty good. We still got this kind of small shapes going on in our object, which I like. And we got this twisting of our object here. So. It's a little bit weird. I'm gonna go ahead, come back up here and just see if we can find maybe a little bit better of a shape. And maybe I'm gonna go ahead and change this, this type around. And we're just going to, like I said, play with this quite a bit to give us something a little bit different. You know, I don't wanna drop this down too much. So I don't want it to get super noisy. maybe change some of these settings around. Like I said, just break up some of the shapes more, but we don't wanna get rid of too much. Let's see what we can get here. Let's see, let's go ahead, jump back down here, see what this has given us. Again, a little bit weird. Let's try and maybe twist this again. Just give us something even more different. So we'll make a copy of this. 
I think I just made a copy of all of them. Nope. So this is really starting to twist things around. Let's go ahead, disable that. Let's see how we want to twist this. Maybe we'll twist it, set it to the top here. See what that gives us. Hmm. That's kind of an interesting shape. A little bit of a different thing going on here. Kind of like that. So let's go ahead and wire this into the rest of our setup here. Jump back down to the bottom and see what our final product looks like. So that's kind of cool. Let's go ahead, set up some lighting, and we'll show how I went about the actual rendering of this inside of Redshift or the colorization, I should say. So let's come up to Redshift. Let's create some lights here. So we'll do RS light, just a couple of interesting light positions. Usually I do a couple like that. And then let's go ahead, like I said, create our material. So I'm gonna lock this and I go create a new pane tab, come over to our material context. I'm also gonna create a second new pane tab and set this to our out context, pop in our Redshift stuff. And then I'm gonna do our RS builder. Dive in here, I'm gonna delete this out and create the RS standard material with the new 3.5 this is the new material I like to, to use this just because it looks a little bit better at least or it's the new standard i guess so so that's something that you should probably get into uh, the habit of using i do kind of like the way it's laid out a little bit better as well let's go ahead and set this up in our object here though so let's do material Wire that in and set the material path. Should be good there. And then in here, we're going to need our camera. Create a camera from our viewport. And let's go ahead and bring up our render view, just see what it gives us. All right, so I pulled up the render view and it was kind of chugging my computer along here. So I went ahead and jumped into this geo node and went to this convert VDB and upped the adaptivity not super high, but just enough to reduce some of the polygons. The higher you go, it will start to really eat into the polygons and just remove some of that detail that you had, but just a little bit won't destroy the detail too much. And honestly, if I wasn't recording, probably wouldn't even need to do that, but it was chugging my computer along here. So hopefully that's no longer the case, but just looking at our scene here, this is what we got. I like to throw on just this flat material to start off with when I start to light my scenes. So let's go ahead and start looking into these lights and let's drop down. We'll do one at a time. So we'll lower the exposure completely just so that kind of eliminates that light completely. If I go ahead and do that with the second one here, you see we just eliminate them both and we'll start to bring this back on. So I actually want to use this one I think as kind of my key light so we'll start with that and then we'll start to raise up the exposure over here just to fill in some of the darker parts and that's not looking too bad I might throw in a, a, another light later on we'll see but let's go ahead and jump into our material here and to get the weird kind of coloring that I got going on I just use the RS curvature node and I wired that into a ramp and did that into our base color. So if I go ahead and change these, I used some blues and greens in the original image. So I'll go ahead and set that back up, do something like that. And then our green here, maybe it's not too bad. I'm gonna actually set these to the B splines as well just so it's a little bit of a smoother gradient. And it's getting a little bit more green than I want, so bring in some of these blues a little bit more. You could throw in another color in here as well if you wanted to. I don't know, maybe, I don't know. Seems to not be doing a whole lot. Maybe we'll throw in this little weird pink 
kind of lower this around. Just play with it. See what different things that you can get, but that's kind of the basics of how I went about this scene. Maybe let's change the viewing angle as well. I don't know, you have to look around and see what different things give you an interesting sort of view for the abstract shapes that you got going on. This is actually pretty sweet. So if you wanna animate this, you can go through, I'm gonna go ahead and just pause this. Go back to our object here, and we can come into this original volume bop and just animate this offset a little bit, and that will add some animation into the overall large shapes. And then if you come back down in here to this final mountain node, I found that adding a little bit of animation to this as well, so into the offset here, that will give you some nice little movement across the surface on these smaller shapes. But ultimately, the key to making this look good is to find an initial shape that looks pretty good, and that's going to be all through this large shapes on this volume pop. But anyways, I do have a bunch of other videos on my channel. If you are interested in learning more about Houdini, make sure you guys check those out. Uh, I also have stuff on Redshift and some stuff on Cinema 4D, Clarice, and a little bit on Octane as well. So if you're interested in any of that, check that out. But hopefully this helps you out, gave you kind of an insight in how I created that original scene and gave you some ideas for some motion graphics type stuff. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.